Big Rat. Three. Ten. I got it. Uh, just gonna do this quickly. I have a plug to give to you guys. RK Yoke the Life. Eleven. Uh, also, young guys, you guys know I love plugging these guys, but these, this guy's actually really good. I enjoy his videos. I enjoy his eccentricness, if that's a word. And he's a really good guy. Check him out. Uh, links on the side, I believe. Uh, what do I have to say about Master Bubba 69? Uh, by the way, Master Bubba on Skype. Sorry if I called you Boo Boo. I didn't, I was wondering why did you take such a big offense to it, I mean it's no big deal. And then I saw one of your videos and I felt I like why it's such a big deal. So I, I looked through your videos trying to find something and I found a video of you being very upset. And if it really does bother you then fine, I will never call you that name again. I'll stick with Master Bubba 69 which is your actual name. Guys, I've asked you guys for two things I haven't gotten either of them. One, the Jake the Snake Roberts DVDs, guys. I told you, Snake Bites and Jake Bites Back. Jake the Snake Roberts made these shoot DVDs by himself, without a studio, without any studio gaga, is what he says. So really, I need you guys to know, have you guys seen it? And tell me, should I get it or not? And secondly, a Q&A, I mean, come on, I only have two questions. One from Edgehead714 and one from Blue CBU. And they're both, both, by the way, both of for you two guys. You guys sent me both very good questions. I like you guys each sent me one, and I really like both of them, so I want to thank you very much. But come on, guys, I need questions for Q and A. Not if you gave questions. If you gave questions for Q and A nine or ten, you you are forbidden from giving me questions for this one. But please, guys, come on! I really need those questions. I really, really, really need those questions, cause it's getting to the point where like, I know I did a lot of Q and As, but Usually, I, I try to do one per week. Sometimes once every two weeks at most. But the rate of going now, I don't even know if I can do one per month. Because I usually get around four questions or five questions in one week. And I've gotten two. So I really need a lot more, guys. Come on. Like, I need at least eight or nine more. Please, guys. Really, send me those questions. Um, Legends of Wrestling. I just today started very briefly, though. I think I only watched ten minutes of this one, the Ric Flair one. Because I got home, I had so much free time, and I wanted to unwind because I was so tired. So I started to watch Chuck, which is one of my favorite TV shows, and Scrubs, which is also one of my favorite TV shows. And I looked at my watch, and it was like, I don't know, I was wrong. I know Impact had already started, it was on 10 ish. And so I thought I'd just pop this in. I was watching it, I got on Skype, I was looking something on the internet. And then when I, after like 10 minutes of watching this, I realized it was almost 11 o'clock, I had to do this impact review, so I had to watch the show, and then, because I have a DVR and I hate watching commercials, especially in wrestling, there's so many commercials that just kill the mood, so I always wait till after the show, which is why my reviews are always late. Like for Raw, most of the time I don't start watching Raw till 11, and then, goes on from there. Uh, so... This was actually a good impact, believe it or not. I was quite surprised. I still thought there's a little stuff that's going to piss me off, but I'm not going to get too critical because I'm tired. And, you know, I really sh I don't have to give TNA a hard time all the time. Um, But this is my main thing. What the hell was the point of having Samoa Joe win the match if he wasn't even going to be captain? What was the point of that? If they're just going to give his position away to AJ, who's just going to give it away to Jarrett? There was zero purpose to have Joe win last week. It did absolutely nothing. And that bothered me a lot. So, you know, Jared's the captain. Also, something else that bothered me, when Scott Snyder was telling Jared about, you know, how he knows Jill, he went through the old days, and he just said, you can't go down a path down memory lane. You got to do it right now. I'm like, what the fuck? To me, AJ seems like an asshole, and Scott Snyder seems like a lovable good guy. Scott Snyder's like the one who looks like he's reaching out to Jeff, and AJ's just being a dick. And is this really supposed to convince me that, that Jared should stay with the front line and not go over to the Mafia? Because after hearing that, I really thought he should have gone to the Mafia after hearing those arguments. So really, TNA, do a better job of convincing me. I mean, come on. Um, I like this new faction. I guess the faction. I think it's called... They don't have a name yet. I'm going to call it Anti-USA. With Sheikh Abdul Bashir, Kiyoshi, and No Limit. And they defeated LAX and Lethal Consequences. 
running theme later tonight. They announced an X Gate match, but when they do their lockdown rundown, they never showed it. And same with what happens later on with the business match. They, I hate it when TNA does that. It's because they just really do it. It's always TNA. They announce a match, and then they don't show it in the rundown. And sometimes they don't even show it on the website, which really pisses me off. Because sometimes, you think, for them not to know, it just really bothers me. Oh, God, McFoley's. This has got to be some of the best promo work I've seen in the past few years. McFoley's dementia pro promos are fantastic. I remember his, uh, I have a footage of it, and I got footage of it from the internet, of uh, his old anti-hardcore, I also read his book, even though you can't really put a McFoley promo on paper, you really have to just watch him do it. But besides his books and what I saw on the internet, I saw some very funny promos in ECW. Probably his he, probably his best work when he doesn't want to do hardcore wrestling anymore and he just wants to, um, you know, be regular. I remember in the, on the ones I saw on TV and on the internet, they showed ones of like you know him wearing a tuxedo saying, "Oh my God, look, let me floss. I need something to floss my teeth." Oh, I have this microphone because I have no two front teeth. Because I'm hardcore. I'm hardcore. Because ECW had a habit of saying, he's hardcore. He'd go, I'm hardcore. In that exact voice. And I don't, wanna, I, I don't think I've seen it on TV, but I read his book and it sounded hilarious. Or Mick Foley to ECW, the most savage, vicious crowd in wrestling history. Mick Foley opened the door at his house and he go, oh, hello. Wearing a sweater is, welcome to my house for the Christmas season. <laughs> Honey, did you get the cookies? I couldn't stop laughing. I never laughed so hard. And that's something I read. I didn't see it. I read it in Have a Nice Day. So, God. He's the, the king. The king of promos. Dr. Stevie is also very good at promos. I think he's very underrated with his promo work. No one really knows that he's really good at promos. I, and I'm glad that he finally kind of got to show a glimpse of what he can do with Abyss. Abyss will fight Max Morgan and Doomsday Chamber of Blood. Yes, while the first one was an epic fail. That's because the first one had six guys and it really only needed two. I'm glad this one has two. I guarantee this could be a good match. Honestly, this could save this feud. You never know. But, God, I just... Don't this feud already honestly all I had to do was have Matt Morgan win and against all odds and this would all be fine. I don't even care if Matt Morgan also won it against all the destination X. That wouldn't have bothered me. But if you have a bis beating Matt Morgan, you already know he can beat Matt Morgan. There's no point in the feud. And I was really looking forward to this feud. You guys know this. I've been hyping up this feud since January, since since like my first video. And I was really looking forward to it. Cause I knew they could put out a good match. I knew that the drama was there. And they fucked it up. Uh, Team 3D defeats Man of the Mafia Security. These guys aren't that good. Give them time, though. I, I don't I don't like to criticize people too much when they really haven't had much. Kurt Angle apologizes to Sting. Trust him to go back to Mafia before anything is decided. Foley said that Sting will fight Joe. Daphne is back, not the governor. Daphne, I don't know if she came back last week because I haven't seen TNA. In. Last time I saw DNA, TNA was when Don West cut his promo on Mike TNA. That was like five weeks ago. No, maybe it wasn't that long. It was, it's been pretty long. I think four, maybe maybe five weeks of television I've missed. That was my last the last impact I saw. Don West giving the promo on Mike today. So I don't know if Daphne had appeared before. This is the first time I saw her uh, right now on TNA. And I'm glad that character's back. Uh, Taylor Ward defeats Madison Rain. Simple. On the, in the uh, lock, t lockdown advantage match. Uh, Jeff Jarrett uh, tells AJ not to use a chair on Steiner, and then the referee distracts Jarrett. And Steiner uses the Steiner Flat Tiner. Yes! The Steiner Flat Tiner, I think that's what it's called. I call it, in 2003, uh, 2002, 2003, I called it the, uh, I think I heard it. I was really young back then. I think I like heard it. And I don't know if it was a real name. I called it the Punk Akissa. I don't. I could have sworn I heard it somewhere or something, but I never seen it. I never, never seen him use it in TNA. Not once. He would always do the Hurricane Rana or the, uh, the uh, Steiner recliner, his submission hold. I never seen him use the Steiner flat tire, and I was happy as hell to see a return, because that is possibly one of my favorite moves of all time. I know you guys think it's weak, but uh, Shelton Benjamin's the gold standard. It's probably my favorite move right now in the WWE. It would be the RKO, but I've seen the RKO for like six years now. I'm getting kind of tired of it. I like the gold standard. It's quick. It's fast. And the side of the time, I kind of did that, except Scott didn't jump. And he didn't focus on the head as much as Shelton does. 
And I, that, that gold standard is still my favorite. And that's why I like the side of the title so much. I was really happy to see it, even if it was on a chair. And um, they win the match. Uh, Joe fights Sting. Gets disqualified. Booker T comes out. He beats a Booker D. And they take Charmel. What the hell does that symbolize? Him taking Charmel to the back? I, I really did not get that. Also, in uh, Legends of Wrestling, I think I remember what I was going to say. Mike Graham, they were talking about how Ric Flair put over guys who really shouldn't have. That was Ric Flair's only fault. How he put over Lex Luger, who apparently they all hate. And he says, Mike Graham goes, yeah, you know, Ric Flair put up guys like, you know, Sting, Lex Luger, guys who did deserve to be there, didn't have passion. I'm like... What the fuck, Sting? Of course Sting had passion for the business. Of course Sting deserved to be there. Maybe it was a mistake. Like I said, I only saw like seven minutes of the whole thing. It was great. Like I said, the documentaries are amazing, by the way. The matches on the first one was just a little iffy. Big Rat, 3, 10, out, peace.